Is there any lady? No. Okay, it's uh, nice to meet you again. It's uh, Today uh, uh, I have the pleasure to be the show chairman. My name is Bogdan Mijinski. Basically, I am from the University of uh, Science of Rotsavi, Science and Technology. But I am uh, actually a uh, professor in the Institute of Innovative Technology in Katowice. Uh, we have uh, today, we have uh, six uh, presentations. One, two, three, four, five, six. And uh, please uh, keep in mind that we have 15 minutes together for the presentation and discussion. First is, uh, is given by Dr. Tomasz Kazimierz Okoń from Wrocław University of Science and Technology and will be on impact of symmetrical phase shifter on power system state estimation. Please go ahead. I have pleasure to present you our results of investigation on impact of symmetrical phase shifter on power system state estimation. Uh, okay, for, for starters, uh, the state estimation is uh, one of the most uh, is the most uh, important element uh, in the uh, real time modeling of power system. In real-time model of power system, we based on set of measurements and set of switch states. Uh, we generate a topology model of power system, and we do a verification of topology model. After do after that, uh, we uh, perform an observability analysis. In this analysis, uh, <coughs> we check if the power system is fully observable. Observable. If not, we try to distinguish observable islands, and after this analysis, we, we perform a state estimation. In the state estimation, in the most basic uh, form, uh, we we want to, to find the best estimation of uh, bus uh, voltages in power system. Uh, uh, after state estimation, uh, we can uh, calculate uh, lacking uh, da data like uh, power uh, flows, uh, bus powers, and uh, this quantity, uh, calculate that uh, values we compare uh, we compare with uh, measurement, <coughs> and in this way we can detect uh, bad, uh, bad data. If everything is correct, uh, we have credible image of power system. Uh, the purpose of our investigation is was, uh, to uh, to check how uh, symmetrical phase shifter uh, influence on power state estimation. Okay, uh, in our analysis. Uh, we use a weight list uh, squared method. Uh, in this method, uh, we minimize uh, the uh, following object function. Uh, it leads to, to uh, this uh, to solving uh, this uh, this equation. Uh, the mm, voltage. Uh, phases uh, we can uh, we can consider in the polar uh, coordinate system or rectangular coordinate system. Uh, symmetrical uh, generally a uh, phase shifter is built from uh, uh, from uh, two transformers: one excitation exci excitation transformer and booster transformer. Uh, uh, booster transformer injects a <coughs> serious voltage and in the symmetrical uh, phase shifter uh, input uh, voltages and output voltages uh, should be equal uh, just uh, we have uh, some uh, shift of, uh, of phase. Uh, 
Um, here we have a, a considered model of phase shifter. Uh, here we have a general uh, equations for, for this model. I, in order to, to consider the symmetrical phase shifter, uh, we can uh, consider this, uh, this uh, <coughs> relation. <coughs> it's for uh, ideal phase shifter. Uh, and here we have for real. In uh, real life, uh, this voltage input and output are equal only in the case when the phase shifter is un uh, unloaded. Uh, when we have some power flows, this, this uh, uh, magnitude of this uh, voltages are not equal, can, can be a little change. Uh, so uh, to consider this fact, uh, we need to cons uh, consider this relation. In the state vector, we don't have uh, this voltage, it's just uh, for, for, uh, for the presentation. Uh, this voltage is a sum of uh, input voltage and series voltage. So if we consider that this voltage is uh, sum of this voltage is uh, uh, input voltages and series voltage uh, and magnitude of uh, this voltage are equal, we can, uh, in this way we can uh, model the real uh, phase shifter. A symmetrical phase shifter. In our investigation, we analyzes, analyze a uh, number of iterations, conditions number of the gain matrix, and accuracy of state estimation. Uh, in our investigation, we know uh, real values because we treat uh, results of power flows as uh, real values. Uh, so, uh, JE. It's a diff. It's a difference uh, between real values from uh, from a power flows computation and uh, results of from estimation. And JM, it's a difference between uh, real values uh, from uh, from uh, from a power flow cal uh, calculation and uh, measured values. Uh, measured values for us, it's. Um, it's, uh, it's a result of uh, the uh, results from power flow calculations uh, with some uh, with some uh, uh, random error. So our investigation we perform on the 14 uh, article uh, bus test system. Uh, we consider the situation with phase shifter and without phase shifter. We considered a symmetrical uh, phase shifter. A phase shifter was installed between, on the line between bus five and four. We considered polar and rectangular coordinate system. We considered uh, different uh, load variants. Uh, also, uh, we considered uh, different uh, for, for, for each load variant, we considered a uh, different uh, phase shift uh, uh, introduced by phase shifter. Uh, we cons in our investigation, we considered a different uh, number of uh, measurements in the power system. Also, uh, randomly, we selected two arrangements of measuring uh, systems. Uh, so, here we have a mm, uh, relative uh, difference between situation when we had, when, when we have a, a power system with a phase shifter and we, we have a power system without a phase shifter. Uh, we can see that when we had a power system with, uh, with a phase shifter, uh, usually, uh, the number of the iteration increased if we compared uh, to the situation without a uh, phase shifter. Uh, also, uh, the results of, invest uh, results of 
when the occurrence of uh, result of estimation was also worse uh, when we had a, a phase shifter in power system. And also condition number was uh, bigger and uh, it means uh, uh, worse uh, when we had a power system with a phase shifter. Uh, also, we, we, we should, for example, for iteration number, the situation was, uh, especially for number of iteration, the uh, situation was worse when we considered a polar <coughs> coordinate uh, system in our co calculations. Uh, this, uh, this, uh, this was caused uh, uh, because when we considered a phase shifter in power system, uh, when we had the same number of measurements, uh, uh, redundancy level uh, in, uh, decreased uh, because we have to uh, consider uh, additional uh, additional elements of uh, state vectors and it, uh, it, uh, it, it was uh, the main reason uh, that the uh, state estimation uh, had uh, worse features uh, when we have power system with a phase shifter. So, in conclusion uh, the data redundancy level is lower for power system with phase shifter than for, than for the same power system without phase shifter and reduced redundancy level for power system with phase shifter leads to worsening of accuracy of state estimation, increasing of number of iterations, increasing of condition number of gain matrix and worsening of state estimation features is higher in polar coordinate system. Thank you. Now the paper open for discussion. Right. Please go ahead. Uh, the connection between the source transformer and the phase shifter transformer is provided by which way? <coughs> <coughs> the beginning of the presentation. Mm -hmm. First, first picture. First picture? This one? No, yeah, yeah. Yes, oh, this yeah. one. This one. This one. Uh, Top charge. Up charger. Uh, I mean, in uh, in our model, we don't have something like top charger. We just uh, model uh, this uh, phase shifter as a two source uh, using two source model. Mm. So, uh, adding uh, additional this. Uh, the serial voltage, we can uh, change. Uh, what, what do you mean by top charger? Just top charger? Sta standard procedure. It depends. Uh, for example, uh, uh, in the. Yes, some sem semiconductor or <coughs> some. In power, uh, in power flow calculation or set estimation, it doesn't mean. Uh, it doesn't matter what, uh, what okay. it's it. That's all. Okay. Thank you very much. Another question? My question is uh, similar to, to your question. So is it something like the phasor measuring units? You use phasor measuring units and you measure the voltage in one point at the, at the power transformer and then you measure the voltage at another selected point in the system. Is yeah. that true? No. And then you try to change the shift to the zero? Yes. Uh, well, what for does example, mean? Yeah. Uh, for example, uh, phase shifter we use to, to regulate mm -hmm. uh, power flows. Okay, uh, but the line. okay, but it we depends on the on the on the phase shift between the voltages in the yes. given points. Yeah. And what and what then? That is a tap changer. Tap changer change you the magnitude. This if it's if it's used. Yes, but anyway, I don't uh, model a uh, tap changer. Okay. I, I can calculate a uh, tap changer as uh, for example. Okay. 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 It looks like a voltage controlled source. Something like yes. this. Yeah. Something like this. It's only voltage control source and the difference between the two vectors. Between yeah, the two vectors, yeah. 
and then to try to squeeze the angle between the, the two zero. That's exactly. Yeah. Yes, exactly. It's like a pe like pheasant, it. like a pheasant measuring units. Yeah. But the pheasant measuring units, they, they measure also the, the vector of current. But here is also the angle. Angle, angle. I can uh, calculate <coughs> from this relation. Okay. Okay. Understandable. And okay. okay. Thank you very much. More questions? No. Thank you very much. Uh, another another speaker is uh, Mr. Eko Suprianto. No, but is okay? Yes. Okay. okay. Thank you. Sorry about the mistake. And he is from Malaysia, and uh, he will have a presentation on the optimum power and signal cable arrangement for minimizing electromagnetic interference in oil and gas industry. Please go ahead. So yes, okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you, Chairman. Okay, good morning, uh, afternoon, everyone. So my name is Prianto. Okay, uh, today I want to present about okay, uh, yeah, my research on the uh, investigation of the optimal power and signal uh, cable arrangement for minimizing electromagnetic interference in oil and gas industry, especially okay uh, for Malaysian oil and gas company uh, Petronas. <coughs> So this is that always uh, happens, and this is okay for example statistic from okay US OS, okay mm -hmm. uh, from 2009 2013 that okay uh, in the oil and gas okay productions okay the uh, fatality is still okay a major problem okay um, in the oil and gas industry. So okay the problem because uh, bec the problem um, of this is because of the improper storage of the flammable oil, gas, and fluids, smoking poor housekeeping but okay number four the most important and related to our problem mm -hmm. now is about the wiring okay this is okay the problem of these explosions so this is a typical uh, cable installation in offshore platform okay uh, this is okay in the offshore platforms okay the most of problem in this okay condition is because of the limited space okay we cannot have okay a big space so that okay the distance between cover need to be arranged as okay close as, as possible and then we have okay at least okay two type of cable power and signal cable where power there is okay high voltage and then low voltage cable and signal cable can be okay high frequency and also low frequency and if you see here okay this is okay for example the typical cable arrangements in oil and gas industry okay sometimes okay they just mix each other okay this is okay that okay make a problem heating and also interference and normally okay the cable is put uh, on the trees i uh, mean on the tray Okay, either on tray like that or okay tray that okay have okay form like that, mm -hmm. and this okay three okay different cable. For example, the high voltage, low voltage, and then the okay uh, signal cables. According to the IEEE five one eight, okay the guide for the installation of electrical equipment. Okay, there are three level of okay cables. Okay, uh, NSL one, level two, and also level three. Level one is the most sensitive. Okay, for example, from thermocouple <coughs> and then from the uh, discrete output and output signal, and then okay, wiring connected to the analog hardware, and okay, some okay data links, and then the level two is okay, uh, yeah, uh, less sensitive compared to the uh, one, but okay, um, this is something that okay, um, greater than okay, 50 volts, and then level three basically is okay, uh, the power, okay, zero until okay, 1000 volt, okay, until 800 amperes. Okay, it's going to raise another level, but it's not stated in this okay uh, uh, standard. <coughs> and then in this okay standard, also mentioned that okay, um, the cable okay with the loads should okay at least one point five meters as a minimum. <coughs> and then also stated um, the distance between cable okay, for example here cable one and cable okay two or three okay for with the cable cable two should be a seventy five. Uh, millimeter and then with cable three, for example, with the power at least okay uh, three hundred millimeter or thirty okay centimeter. This is stated in the standard. But okay, based on our okay findings, okay, um, that okay, for example, okay, uh, we have this uh, configuration on the CTV. If we see if we have cable with uh, okay three point three kilovolt high voltage cable close to okay two cores okay uh, signal cable that is twenty four volts. Okay, uh, we have problem if the cable is okay uh, too okay close. And this cable, if okay, we have a distance, then okay, we see okay, the CCTV is okay clear. According to this IEEE, okay, um, if the cable okay NSL two, we need to have seventy five millimeter, and then if cable is NSL three, is three hundred millimeter. In this case, is okay NSL three, okay, um, actually is comply with the standard. Only okay, this is okay. Sometimes it's not applicable in oil and gas industry, especially in offshore because okay, the okay limited space. And then in our okay, um, 
this is Petronas, okay, technical standard. So, okay, we have requirement that at least, okay, the cable distance is, okay, 30 millimeter. But if we, okay, put it 30 millimeter, then, okay, there will be interference effect. Okay, this is another problem. And then another problem is, okay, okay, we found also from the other industrial standard, okay, need to have like 400, okay, millimeter, okay, uh, cable distance. But, okay, this is also, okay, too big. So that, okay, we, okay, uh, try to investigate the optimal cable arrangement in oil and gas industry for minimizing, okay, interference, uh, effect on the signal cables and also to give scientific recommendation for adjustment of cable arrangement in okay our standards okay this is basically the objective okay for this objective we do okay two things okay first is the modeling and then second we do also some okay measurement this okay for the modeling we, we use the cst uh, the cable studio uh, uh, simulations <coughs> okay we okay uh, have okay um, yeah pa uh, pairs of okay, cables that we okay apply in our <coughs> models for example, here for the low voltage cable, okay, we use okay four cores, and then okay um, also three cores with 25 millimeter square, and then okay for the okay high voltage cable, for example here we took um, single core, okay with 240 okay millimeter square, and then uh, three core 50 okay millimeter square, and then for the okay signal cable, we have two types of signal cable here, we have okay two cores, and also okay I mean okay. Uh, without okay twisted pairs and then here we have okay twisted pairs okay signal cables so this is okay the cable spec of the signal cable <coughs> okay we have okay two cores that have okay conductor of okay 16 conductors with the diameter of each conductor 0 0.2 millimeter and the uh, diameter of the cable is 6 and the width okay, is 40 frames and okay uh, the second one we have 16 also a uh, bigger and then width is okay uh, higher and then okay for the simulation we also okay do simulation on the cable tray that have okay this kind of designs and also cable ladder that we have okay this kind of design. Okay, normally okay industry we prefer to have this because this is okay cheaper compared to this one, but this is okay much more better in terms of the interference protections. And then for the okay, tray and ladder, okay, we use okay a cable tray. This uh, here is okay one meter, uh, sorry okay one hundred okay millimeter or 10 centimeter and then okay for the cable ladder 150 okay millimeter and then perforated for the cable tray and uh, we have the rung spacing 125 millimeter and then cable uh, material thickness 2 millimeter same the material uh, type is also same stainless steel and width and also length same okay in the CST okay we use okay this schematic diagram okay we have the high voltage cable and then also the SC or the okay, uh, signal cable for the high voltage cable, we uh, yeah input the voltage of 3.3 kilovolts, uh, 50 hertz uh, sinus, and then for the signal cable, we have 24 uh, volts square cable with 50 percent dirty cycle and 32 uh, microsecond period and 0 0.1 microsecond okay rise and falling time. And then for the low uh, voltage cable, we use okay 15 volts and okay 50 hertz. So um, from the simulation using this CST, okay, we found that okay, um, this, for example, the effect <coughs> of okay, uh, interfer uh, electromagnetic interference from the high voltage cable on okay two core VS cable. We see here okay, uh, the uh, between okay zero and ten uh, centimeter, uh, basically okay, we see the effect of the interference. Okay, um, this one basically is on the ladder, <coughs> and this is okay on the tray, and okay with interference, and both are without armor. With armor, we can see that uh, the interference effect can be really uh, minimized. But without armor, okay, we can see okay uh, the interference okay uh, this. But after 10 cm, we see okay uh, reducing of this. And then this is the effect of okay um, on the twisted pair. Okay, uh, if we see here 0 0.3 volts is the interference, and here okay uh, smaller 0 0.2 means twisted pair in this case is better compared <coughs> to okay uh, just okay uh, two cores okay uh, DS or signal cable. And then we try also okay using the okay low voltage cable. Okay, we see the interference. Okay, it's not really okay. Uh, yeah, uh, appears here. Okay, just zero point one, and then okay, uh, it's not okay related to the okay distance. And here it's just zero point zero one. Man means okay, much more smaller compared to okay this. This is okay for the twisted pair. From here we can conclude also that twisted pair is also <coughs> better okay compared to two core cable. Okay, and then we do also validations. We conduct so some okay uh, measurements. Okay, this is okay for basically okay a measurement result um, of interference effect of signal cable. Okay, without armor on the ladders, and then the other one is on the tray, 
And then the second one is okay. Um, if we also conduct the mission result on the cable with Amo on the ladder, we see okay the result is uh, close okay uh, with the simulations. Uh, so we do also okay the second validations okay <coughs> using measurement on the okay um, LV interference effect on two core DS cable without Amo on the ladder, and also okay um, the same case only with uh, Amo on the ladder. Okay, we see also uh, between okay. Uh, Simulation and measurement result is okay uh, comparable. So okay, um, and then okay, we compare okay our results or <laughs> simulation results okay with the okay uh, standard value. Okay, um, basically okay uh, from the norm one that we found and also norm two. Okay, from our uh, standards. Okay, we found okay there is okay difference means okay for the LV to core we need to have okay ten centimeter distance. And then for 20 cent uh, for the okay high voltage to core we need to have 20 centimeter distance, and then okay um, for the twisted pair we need to have okay lower 10 centimeter and 0 centimeter for low voltage compared to okay this. So and then for the armor cable okay actually okay we can put okay, <coughs> close is other for the armor cable because it's uh, no okay interference effect. Okay, this basically okay the summary. Okay um, yeah we have done so, okay uh, the simulations and then we found that okay. Um, uh, the armor cable we can put okay close to each other but without armor we need to consider if the high voltage cable we need to have at least okay 20 centimeter if low voltage cable we need to have okay 10 centimeter 10 centimeter but if twisted pair then okay we just okay can put uh, close to each other so as conclusions of my presentation today okay first okay the effect of electromagnetic interference from the high voltage and low voltage power cable have been investigated and then, okay, variables, uh, cable types and arrangement in tray and ladder have been also modeled using the CST cable stim uh, study simulator. And then the peak uh, voltage and voltage of fluctuations at signal cable due to uh, EMI effect of the power has been compared at the distance from zero until okay, 60 centimeter. And simulation results show that uh, EMI power cable has no significant effect on the voltage rotation at AMO cable. Whereas okay, EMI from the high voltage power cable has significant effect on <coughs> non amo okay, signal cable. Okay, uh, this non amo cable a twisted pair can be located closely to okay LV power cable, and okay the result have also compared with the okay existing uh, norm from two different uh, industrial standard, and comparison results show that existing standard have significant different with the simulation result. Okay, this result okay for us is very important to be used okay for future industrial standard okay input or adjustment. So thank you very much for your attention and please thank for you. any questions. Thank you very much. <laughs> now we the papers open for discussion. Who wants to say please? Uh, the information that I'm missing uh, was the frequency range. For which frequency range you have invested? <coughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. For the input is very clear. Okay, 50 hertz. Okay, because power, and then okay for the okay output. Okay, we have get a uh, few types of okay signal. Okay, here we have the okay CCTV signal that is in a video okay uh, frequency. Okay, a few okay hundred megahertz, um, and then we also okay try in okay uh, low frequency in the FM frequency one hundred megahertz, but okay between one hundred and one gigahertz basically the okay, signal frequency. Um, and then the question comes. Uh, the geometry yes. Mm -hmm. Did I get you right that you have simulated just three meters of the cables running in the tray? Yes, correct. Yeah. What makes you the reason this? Okay, basically this is the limitation of the okay um, simulator because okay even okay <laughs> just three meters, okay this is the okay we need to have like okay eight hours okay simulation time. So for what frequency range? Okay, as I mentioned, okay, before, okay, this is okay for the video, okay, frequency, basically. Okay, thank you very much. One question? I have a question. I, I just uh, missing me information about the influence of electric or magnetic field, since you can consider the only influence of, of the electric field, the but just the voltage. But the, but the key factor is the influence of, of magnetic field, since the current flowing in the power current flowing in this, it can be tremendously distorted by any devices. What's going on? Can you measure it? Since just only you are talking about electromagnetic interference, but yeah. mm -hmm. as a matter of fact, is electric interference. Yeah. Basically, okay, this is okay. Um, low frequency, okay, because the signal from the low frequency mm -hmm. mostly is okay influenced by the okay magnetic fields. Mm -hmm. So that okay, uh, the electric field is not really considered. Okay, it's <coughs> almost okay. Uh, yeah, no effect. But you have not mentioned any current here. Ah, uh, yes, in the current. simulation, okay, basically, okay, we have load here, 
with but some local care. Um, <coughs> it is okay. Uh, we have 50 ohm, for example. But there's uh, there's just there's a current current is here. Okay, we have okay. Cross section. Uh, 50 ohm. No 50 ohm. But yeah. what's about, what about the current value in the power in the power con in the power conductor? Okay. Power uh, value and distortion of the current. So the current can be very seriously distorted. And yeah. we have found, mm -hmm. that, for example, in the mine, in the mine we have the same <coughs> problem. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. But it is mostly due to due to the current. This not mostly due to the current. Not, 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 not due to the this. Yeah, correct. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. It means really okay. Uh, we have the uh, ideal okay power voltage. I mean voltage uh, source, and then we have okay the okay lot 50 ohm basically. So that okay we just need to calculate 50, uh, 50 divided by that. Okay. Thank you very much. We will like to talk. Thank okay. you very much. Thank okay. you. Thanks again. Okay, the, the, just may I ask the next presenter, it's from uh, Pavel Drabek and uh, from Czech Republic and he will have a presentation on design and analysis of a new zero current transition bidirectional DC-DC converter for energy storage system. Please go ahead. Okay, thank you Mr. Chairman. My name is Paul Drabek, uh, I am uh, associate professor at the uh, Faculty of Electrical Engineering, University of West Bohemia in Czech Republic. And today I am going to present a uh, research work which was done by my, my uh, postdoc researcher, Mr. Uh, Kumar Bajana, which was from India, and uh, he stayed uh, two years uh, at our department. About the outline of the presentation, firstly, some motivation why we started this uh, research, then uh, some simulation and experimental results, and then I will conclude the presentation. Firstly, the motivation. <coughs> We made some project uh, using the energy storage systems. First was uh, on the hybrid bus. It was a standard configuration, uh, AC generator, <coughs> then some DC bus. and DC bus, we have some oxide drives and two energy storage systems. First based on batteries, second based on supercaps. Very similar was also for trams. There is just only one energy storage system based on supercaps. In both cases, we are using uh, three modules for Maxwell. It's a standard, uh, standard traction uh, supercast module. And uh, this is uh, a data sheet of the Maxwell. Uh, it's a standard 125 uh, volts module, 63 farads. And what's uh, important, it's a value of the current. Uh, maximum continuous current, 150 amps. However, it's also possible to make uh, maximum current uh, 750 amps for a very short time, or just, moment, uh, just one second. This is very important uh, value because uh, in, uh, in combination uh, with batteries, it's possible to uh, charge a lot of energy to the supercars at the first moment and then uh, switch to batteries. <coughs> because in batteries, it's a problem that uh, starting of the chemical reaction, it's um, below the one second, but uh, for this time, you can charge uh, the energy. And in case of uh, traction vehicles, if you are braking the vehicle and you, are, you want to uh, charge or store uh, this energy, one second at uh, this vehicle, it means almost 20% of speed. Uh, it, it's square, it's energy that you can store. So lost per second, it's a little problem. Therefore, we are, we are thinking <coughs> about using uh, this uh, maximum current. However, it means uh, five times more, so we will also think about designing of the uh, converter. We need to, to design for a five times more current. Therefore, we thought about uh, possible using of source switch uh, topologies. We have some uh, uh, experiences with source switch <laughs> topologies, but with standard CR resonant tanks. This is for traction application. This is for auxiliary drives. However, in both cases, it's a standard resonant tank. It means that you have a fixed width uh, of, the, of the voltage, standardly 50 to 50 percent. Then you just only design uh, the resonant tank that you are finishing before you are switch off uh, the voltage. However, in case if you want to use uh, an energy storage system connected to the input <coughs> voltage, in, li in light action, it's oscillated from 400 up to 1 kilovolt. So it's a problem. If, you are, if, if the voltage is changing, you also need to change the width. Then it's a problem to use a standard resonant tank because if you uh, switch the width, you can switch off, not with the uh, zero conditions, but with uh, hard switching condition. That's a little bit problem. 
Therefore, we thought about uh, the design of the uh, soft switch uh, converter with additional uh, switches. Uh, the demand was a non-insulated bidirectional converter. It means non-insulated because we don't need insulation in this system. Bidirectional because we need to charge and discharge the, st the storage systems. We will use uh, additional source switch cells and uh, using the source switching uh, conditions, it means that there's a lower stress on uh, switches a reduction of the switching losses. Then we can, we can say that you can use uh, higher current uh, for switching uh, upon the almost the same total losses. Uh, upon the research project, we made some uh, topologies, and today I will talk about this one. Uh, simulation parameters uh, input voltage 150, output voltage 250 <coughs> volts, approximate power 1 kilovolt. Uh, we are using switching frequency 50 kilohertz, and this is a uh, passive parameters. So we have uh, two main switches because we need uh, the direction of flowing of the power, so it must be boost back uh, topology. Then auxiliary switches plus resonance tank. Uh, for boost mode, we have uh, two stages, the main stages. The first one, the visual circuit, the input voltage, is a flowing the current, increasing the current, then switch off and current is going to output side. Simulation, uh, this is a um, basic idea how, how, we want to, uh, how we want to control when we would like to switch off the main, uh, the main switcher. Before that, we are preparing the auxiliary switch with the resonant tank to uh, decrease <coughs> the main current of the main switcher uh, to close to zero and then switch off. It's a case of uh, some simulations. The main switcher, auxiliary switcher, and we are preparing before switching off the main switcher. I just also need to point it that uh, voltage on the <coughs> resonant uh, capacitor oscillate to both uh, polarities, so it's necessary uh, during the design to think about that, that we need to uh, capacitor allowing uh, both polarity. Uh, in back mode, we have also two main uh, stages, the first one, that we are uh, flowing the energy from the output side to input side. When we switch off the main switcher, it's going uh, oscillating through the clearing diode of the switcher to It's also simulation results. <coughs> also in this case, we are preparing uh, the auxiliary switch before we want to uh, switch off the main switcher. Also the voltage on the resonant type, it's also in both polarities. Uh, we prepared an uh, uh, experimental stand. Here is uh, uh, the converter designed for, uh, with uh, IGBT's uh, 1200 volt uh, devices uh, with controlling uh, system. Also, these small uh, PCBs uh, are the resonant uh, tank. It means inductance, resonant inductance and resonant capacitor. This is input inductor, this is output uh, capacitor. Uh, experiments for boost mode. This is uh, voltage and current of the main switcher, auxiliary switcher. You can see that before uh, we are take off the switcher, we are preparing by the auxiliary switch, uh, reducing of the current flowing through the main switcher. And also there is a voltage of the resonant capacitor, which is oscillated in both polarities. Uh, for back mode, it's almost the same. Also here are the main forms of voltage and current of the main switcher. This is of the auxiliary switch. <coughs> uh, also is uh, seen that before we are switch off the main switcher, we are preparing the auxiliary switch. In both cases, uh, about the dimension, the currents are almost similar. It's uh, almost clear because uh, if we need to decrease uh, the current of the main switcher, the auxiliary switcher is almost the same ratio in both cases. Uh, as a conclusion, we proposed a non-isolated uh, bidirectional converter 
uh, which is possible to use for energy storage system in case if we would like to uh, approve the maximum current which we can make uh, by the energy storage systems. Especially it's for increasing the total efficiency of the power management system of the vehicle. Because there is only this way that we will use for the first second the total kin uh, kinetic energy of the, of the vehicle. Uh, to obtain a source switching operation, uh, we are using uh, auxiliary switches together with a and tank to provide a really uh, soft switch uh, conditions of the main switcher. Uh, as was seen uh, from the waveforms, it's a switch off of the main switcher. Uh, upon the simulations, we also prepared an uh, experimental stand and verified the simulations by the experiments. So, thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Can you show in your slides where are those 500 amps? That's right. Where are those 500 amps in your converter? 500 amps? Uh -huh. No, no. It's, uh, as I showed here, it's just only for one kilowatt. <coughs> so you have many of these in parallel. Yeah, this is just only... Uh, How you uh, Ned, uh, planning to put the current into a supercapacitor? Yeah, this is just only a study about this topology. How does it work? It means a soft switch uh, topology. And after that, of course, we have to, for the final implementation, like uh, here, mm -hmm. for this application, we are standardly used uh, one, uh, 1,700 volts devices. It's a box, big box. So this is just only a study about the topology, about the controlling and but that is what. So, so far, how you balance the current? Well, this is just only one switch after that, if you need. It's because it's not so a big, uh, because if you have uh, just only uh, 375 volts, and you can use uh, 7, 700 amps, so it's possible to use, for example, by skip from semicron, it's possible to use it. But it's a really big device. <laughs> what uh, about the arcing? Because uh, you showed that there will be the contact. So once you introduce the arcing in the connector lines. Do you mean, so the, the do you mean this? Mm -hmm. Well, the voltage will jump or not? There is, there is no impact uh, to the input side because uh, you are connected to the input LC filter. So it's almost, uh, you are just only... So filter will absorb your... There's, there, there's no reason. Well, I think when the only we have an arcing, there's no jump in voltage, so there's no, still no. current is flowing inside. There's a break, total break, and that's the jump. But it's, it's the arc is not, because it's not total break. This is inside <laughs> almost, because here is a traction motor, when you are breaking, you are just only flowing <laughs> the energy. No, no, uh, I, am, uh, I was wondering how about how the current will flow from the connector. Line that mm -hmm. Well, but it's almost independent because this is really, you are just only flowing the energy between the traction motor and energy storage system. Mm -hmm. And then it depends if, if you need uh, to take some energy from the our headline. Mm -hmm. Okay, no problem. Okay, but you. arcing is standardly <coughs> in, in winter. It's a standard problem of the light traction vehicles. Okay, thank you very much. I hope since the, it was very fast, I think that it is designed for the uh, lithium ion. Uh, Battery probably, right? It's not uh, a common battery. Uh, it's a standard from Thunder Sky, the yellow one. It's a, a Lions and also the green one. It's a power batteries. But not, not the one, the lead battery, lead acid. No, 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 no. No, no, I'm just okay. Okay, understood. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank, you. Uh, thank you, Professor. The next, uh, the next presentation will be by my Mr. Bahadir Akbal. Okay, and this uh, from Turkey and the Italian OSSD and hybrid methods to prevent cable fault for harmonic containing networks. Please go ahead. Uh, welcome to my presentation. Uh, my name is Bahadur Akbar from Turkey. Uh, OSSB and hybrid methods to prevent cable faults for 
harmonic containing networks my uh, study uh, transmission of electrical energy uh, uh, high voltage transmission by is made by uh, by using two ways uh, base ways overhead lines and underground cable lines uh, overhead lines uh, transmission tower insulation and uh, conductor are the most important materials for high voltage overhead lines tower structure and number of insulation uh, varies according to line voltage levels. Uh, if voltage level increases, uh, size of tower and uh, number of insulator uh, increase to provide uh, electrical insulation. Uh, the towers used in the different voltage levels are shown in figure 1 uh, and uh, overhead lines are shown in figure 3 uh, and uh, insulation are shown in figure uh, 3. Uh, different uh, st uh, structure types uh, of uh, tower overhead lines and uh, transmission line insulation <coughs> overhead lines uh, are very useful for uh, transmission of electrical energy uh, however these lines uh, cause uh, safety problem in city center or crowded areas these problems uh, can be the tower collapse electroshock and uh, arc flash and fire uh, some problems are shown in figures. Hence, uh, high voltage underground uh, cable lines are used in uh, these regions. Uh, security uh, in figure uh, 6 uh, shows the uh, secret zone of uh, transmission line, uh, and in uh, figure 7 uh, shows uh, fire risk of transmission line. Uh, high voltage underground cable line uh, has an insulation layer uh, to prevent electric shock, uh, arc flash, and short circuit. So it can be used it, uh, used in uh, crowded areas. Uh, hard, uh, high voltage cable line is uh, more reliable than uh, overhead lines. Hence, overhead lines have been converted to uh, high voltage underground cable lines in city center. High voltage undercurrent uh, cable uh, occurs uh, from different layers, and uh, these layers uh, is shown in figure eight. These layers is shown. Conductor, conductor screen, insulation layer, insulation screen, uh, and semiconducting tape, uh, alum uh, aluminum sheet. Uh, and uh, high voltage uh, cable line uh, uh, used in uh, standard cable channel. Metallic sheet is used uh, to protect insulation uh, layer of high voltage cable uh, <coughs> against the environmental uh, factors. Uh, however, uh, sheet currents uh, <coughs> occur on a metallic sheet of high voltage underground cable. Uh, and uh, Circulating uh, sheet current can be called as uh, circulating, uh, circulating current. Uh, uh, in figure uh, 10, uh, the circulating cur uh, current is shown. Sheet current uh, generated it generates uh, sheet voltage on a metallic sheet of high voltage cable, and uh, the uh, this is K. Uh, 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 and uh, sheet vo uh, if sheet voltage uh, value is bigger than touch voltage limit, uh, electroshock risk of occurs of for current. Uh, cable falls then uh, and uh, also uh, sheet voltage cases uh, cable falls. <coughs> uh, cable falls generally occurs as insulation falls and cable termination falls. This falls as uh, is shown figures. Uh, insulation faults, termination faults. Uh, metallic sheet is uh, bonding. Uh, uh, metallic uh, sheet of high voltage uh, cable must be uh, grounded to prevent uh, uh, sheet current effect. And uh, in the literature, the in the literature, uh, three T bonding methods are used. These methods, uh,
single single point bonding, solid bonding, cross bonding. These bonding methods are shown in figures. Single point bonding, solid bonding, and cross bonding methods. If a single uh, point bonding will be used, uh, uh, will be used a high voltage line length should be less than 200 meters. Uh, so, uh, cross bonding and uh, solid bonding uh, are used for uh, long high voltage lines. Uh, however, the sheet voltage of cross bonding method is generally more than solid bonding. So, solid bonding can be used for bonding cable. Bonding of cable. Uh, However, the sheet voltage, uh, solid voltage, can be exceed touch voltage uh, limit in case of increasing uh, unbalanced fast current and harmonic distortion. Uh, it is seen that these, me uh, these methods are not uh, exactly uh, sufficient to uh, prevent the sheet current effects. So, uh, thus, uh, sectional solid bonding (SSB) is developed. Uh, in figure 16, the sectional uh, solid, uh, shows so, uh, sectional uh, solid bonding. In uh, sectional solid bonding, uh, uh, total line uh, uh, total line length is called as <coughs> major part, major part, and major part divided uh, minor parts, and minor parts uh, minor parts uh, uh, should be uh, optimized. Uh, minor part parameters, uh, pa minor part uh, length, L max, uh, minimum distance of between faces, uh, and corrosion resistance Rg. <coughs> In this study, genetic algorithm, particle swarm optimization, inertia weak particle swarm optimization, and differential al uh, evolution algorithm are used for optimization of SSP and OSSP are developed. However, the uh, sheet current of uh, uh, high, uh, high voltage cable line should be known for optimization of, of uh, OSSP. Uh, high voltage, uh, the sheet uh, current of high voltage cable uh, for for forecasting uh, studies uh, is used uh, for uh, high voltage underground cable sim uh, underground cable uh, sheet current. Uh, firstly, uh, 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 firstly, in this in this study, high voltage underground cable is modeled. PSK simulation program uh, and simulation of high voltage underground cable lines are made to determine sheet current. In PSK uh, uh, 29 different high voltage underground cable lines are modeled and sheet currents of these lines are measured. These uh, these data uh, are used to forecast uh, uh, sheet current of high voltage underground uh, cable lines. These factors as follows. Unbalanced fast current value, high voltage cable length, distance between phases, underground resistance of uh, bonded metals. These factors are used to forecast the sheet current of high voltage underground cable. Uh, in forecasted uh, studies, uh, feed forward, feed forward back propagation FFBP, cascade feed forward back propagation, Elman back propagation, and layer recurrent uh, network types and uh, hybrid uh, artificial neural network uh, methods are used. Uh, and uh, uh, DA uh, PSO 
GA and IPSO are used optimization of uh, hybrid ANN. A hybrid ANN flow chart is shown in figure <coughs> 17. And estimation of sheet current, variables, unbalanced and phase current, high voltage cable length, distance between phases, chronic resistance of bonding method, and uh, the uh, sheet current estimated by uh, artificial neural network. In table B, in table one, input parameters are shown. EI will be unbalanced phase current, L is uh, length of cable line, D distance of phase conductor, RG is grounding resistance. This uh, matrix uh, is used uh, for uh, estimate uh, for forecast uh, the uh, sheet <coughs> current of high voltage underground cable lines. And 29 uh, uh, data uh, are used uh, 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 training of uh, ANN. For uh, uh, table in table two, uh, errors of uh, in table two shows uh, errors of forecasting method, training errors, uh, forecasting errors, and uh, in uh, uh, and uh, table three uh, shows uh, the forecasted sheet uh, current values of uh, forecasted method. This values is shown, and uh, errors is shown. Training and uh, training, uh, training and forecasting uh, errors dif of different N uh, <coughs> networks uh, is uh, lower than uh, the other uh, uh, the other uh, uh, N uh, network types. Uh, so uh, also training and forecasting errors of uh, hybrid IPCO ANN hybrid ANN methods are lower than the other hybrid ANN methods. Uh, hence, IPC ANN methods is uh, suggested uh, to forecast the sheet current uh, studies. After the sheet current is determined, optimization of uh, SSP can be made. Uh, application of uh, SSP uh <coughs> Uh, in uh, uh, figure 19 uh, shows a flow chart of uh, OSSP. <coughs> <coughs> uh, uh, optimization of uh, SSP in optimization of SSP, uh, GA, PCO, IPCO, and DA are used for optimization. In simulation uh, studies, uh, uh, this show the, uh, in uh, figure uh, 20 the result of solid bonding with, uh, and without uh, harmonic uh, harmonics condition. Uh, the sheet voltage uh, uh, 178 voltage. Uh, this voltage uh, is uh, bigger than touch voltage. Uh, so. Uh, 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 SSP uh, method is should be uh, made and uh, with harmonic conditions uh, please go to conclusions okay mm -hmm. conclusion mm -hmm. uh, in this study uh, all SSP method is suge uh, suggested eliminate the uh, static sheet current of high voltage underground cable lines uh, in high harmonic distortion condition uh, and parameters of OSSP should be optimized according to a uh, sheet current value. Uh, hence, uh, 
sheet current value uh, uh, is estimated by uh, uh, IPCO ANN. Uh, after sheet current is forecasted, IPCO ANN uh, and uh, of the SSP are optimized uh, by I IPCO GA uh, DA uh, method separately. Uh, and these uh, uh, these results of uh, OSSP solid bonding methods are compared to determine the most suitable method for bonding of high voltage underground cable line. When solid bonding is used, high voltage uh, harmonic distortion sheet voltage is measured 118. Uh, uh, third, uh, uh, 18, uh, three in PSK. According to these results, uh, OSSP is the most suitable method uh, to prevent uh, sheet current effects, and IPCO GA or DA uh, can be used for optimization of OSSP parameters. Thank you very much. <laughs> Question. How many hidden wires you applied for artificial neural networks? Uh, five. Because according to the figure, it looks like only one. Uh, uh, I okay, don't show. Use, uh, use five. Uh, that's okay. Yes. So you treat it as a non-linear problem. Yes. Not a yes. Okay. Thank you very much. This is a really serious problem. We call it not sheet current. We call it stray current. Stray current is very dangerous in the in the companies, for yes. example, in the mines and everything. This use a special grounding system with made the, the ba balance of different potential then the current flow due to potential, different yes. potential. That's a serious problem. Okay. And you have to look at the asymmetry of load. Asymmetry of load is, is a key factor to implement yes. this and things and then the contain of high harmonics with the current yes. is also is also main factor influencing this problem. Yes. Okay, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. The next um, paper will be given by Ignas uh, Andriauskas. Okay, and will be on analysis of progressively ambulance induction motor current signal based on information entropy. Please go ahead. Thank you. <coughs> Good afternoon, dear uh, chairman, uh, colleagues and guests. My name is Ignas Andriauskas, uh, and as you mentioned, uh, today I will present the article named Analysis of Progressively Unbalanced Induction <coughs> Motor Current Signal Based on Information Entropy. The co-author of this article is Rima Sadashkevichus. The article presents the capabilities of a new fault identification method used for different fault levels. The method allows identifying unbalanced induction motor by using only stutter current signal. The aim of this article is to present and investigate new fault identification method under different conditions by incre increasing the level of unbalance in the induction mot motor. Uh, the approach of progressively unbalanced allows us to determine which time interval and the band of frequencies are best for diagnosis. In this slide, the main part of algorithm <coughs> are presented. First part is acquisition of stator uh, phase current signal, then the calculation of information entropy of signal, then signal division into frequency subbands using wavelet packet decomposition and reconstruction of second level. Uh, then calculation of information entropy of specific frequency subband signal, uh, calculation of ratio between entropies before wavelet packet transform and after it, and the last is comparison of ratio and fault representing threshold values. Uh, for G levels of decomposition, the wavelet packet decomposition produces t in, uh, 2 in the power of J uh, different set of coefficients. Here you can see uh, we used a second power layer, so we got two in the power of two, four different coefficients from <laughs> one signal. Uh, H and G are wavelet quadrature mirror filters here. In, in here. 
To validate proposed methodology and define best terms, induction motor was tested in the laborator lab laboratory at different levels of unbalance. During the experiment, one of three stator phase currents was sampled and investigated. The experiment comprised two main parts. The first was data acquisition of a healthy and progressively unbalanced induction motor, whereas the second one was procession of data for explicit results. To imitate induction motor in balance, additional weights were fastened on the pulley. You can see in the figure uh, front view of induction motor and additional weights were fastened on the pulley. Uh, here are the uh, uh, 10 cases of uh, uh, additional weights which were fastened. <coughs> this is uh, exact weight and this is the total weight <coughs> of, of the case. Uh, there is no zero case because zero case was a healthy motor to compare. So it was 11 cases. For processing, the signals were divided into five overlapping time intervals. You can see in the table five overlapping time intervals from zero to three seconds. Mm -hmm. The signals will, were extracted from the time when the inrush current amplitude reaches the determined threshold. One of the analyzed signals with two time intervals, first and second one, is displayed in figure. First inter interval with solid rectangle, while the second one with dashed. Because of overlapping time intervals, it can be determined which interval is best for diagnosis of a broken motor. Now the results a little bit. To reduce un uh, uncertainties, the signal of each case was captured and investigated 10 times. A total data set of 110 independent signals was collected. This figure shows uh, the worst case for comparison. So you can see that median entropy ratio of investigated health motor is around 1.78 here. Here is healthy and progressively unbalanced. So healthy 1.785 maybe. And only in a few cases, uh, I th uh, marked 37 and 55, here 37 and 55, there is a clear difference without overlapping in values of lower and upper quartile between <coughs> healthy and broken motor, while in the remaining cases it's impossible to make the correct decision. Now the best case. This figure shows that median entropy ratio of healthy motor is around 173 here. Uh, in all cases, there is clear difference in values of lower and upper quartile. I marked with a uh, uh, dotted rectangle here. Um, for example, the worst case is when 12 gram weight was used because it has the lowest contrast, but it still has a uh, uh, place to, to make correct decision. Conversely, usage of 37 weight gram weight has the highest contrast. Contrast. It is worth noting that the smallest 5 gram uh, unbalance mm, uh, caused the fault which has a very high contrast, like using 37. So it could be concluded from here that the uh, dependency is not linear. You can see the m m media me median entropies are uh, not linear function. Uh, the analysis of results show that the best node for diagnosis is 2-2. It should be noted that node 2-2 has a high contrast between healthy and broken motor. Intervals with the best performance at node 2-2 is fifth, when the difference between values of lower and upper quartile of health and broken motors respectively is around 0 0.02. Um, now conclusions. The progressively held experiment has proved that proposed methodology is suitable both for low and high levels of unbalance. Uh, during the experiment, best frequency band and time intervals were diagnosed. Uh, frequency in the range from 375 to 563 Hz and time from 1.5 seconds to 3 seconds. The results have also demonstrated that information entropy ratio is non-linear function of unbalanced level. Thank you for your attention. I would, would like to answer the questions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for keeping the time. The questions? I was trying to be a fast. Okay, thank you very much.
Is it the three-phase uh, motor? Yes, three-phase three induction motor. motor. That is, have you checked this, your methodology with a very simple methodology with indicating n balance by calculating negative component? No. Since usually we use negative component. A negative component is a very simple calculation. You mm -hmm. need not to use uh, any sophisticated mm -hmm. methodology. By, by usually is a, is a level of, uh, mm -hmm. of a negative component of the current is a load for the mm -hmm. current. Okay, but please, I will please, please do, please okay. do. Okay, any question? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And now we go to the last presentation given by the Mr. Davud Gaderi from Iran. Yes. And uh, it will be on uh, efficiency improvement for the DC-DC quadratic power boost converter by applying a switch term of loss losses snubber structure based on zero voltage switching. Please go ahead. Thank you. Okay, everybody, hello. Uh, thank you for your participation in my presentation. My name is Dawood Qadiri. I'm a faculty staff in the uh, Department of Electrical and Electronics Engineering of Bursa Technical University, Bursa, Turkey. Uh, our uh, study is a, is a combination between a uh, snubber sub uh, circuit and uh, quadratic boost converter uh, for uh, improving the power transmission efficiency uh, uh, and uh, uh, it uh, has a simple uh, structure and have only an inductor, a capacitor and two dials for uh, reducing the switching losses. Our work is a combination of uh, simulation and uh, also implementation. Uh, I'm going to talk to uh, you about uh, general structure of a cascade this DC boost converters, mm -hmm. uh, quadratic boost converters, and our uh, proposed passive uh, snubber circuit. And after that, I will uh, talk about uh, the efficiency and uh, all kinds of uh, uh, losses, especially about switching losses. I will talk uh, and uh, about our methodology and uh, finally about uh, simulation and experimental result. I will uh, discuss. Uh, there are uh, uh, two uh, general uh, ways of uh, switching in a DC DC converter hard switching and soft switching uh, when you have no uh, sub uh, circuit it's not a sub circuit you are uh, using hard uh, switching and uh, when you are using a, a sub circuit as a snubber circuit you are talking about uh, soft switching soft switching contains of two ZVC zero voltage uh, switching and ZCS uh, zero current uh, switching uh, and uh, in this kind uh, switches are turned on or off at zero current or zero uh, voltage uh, about this slide I can talk as you know uh, as you can see uh, when a s switch uh, is going to uh, go to off mode in this uh, uh, slide uh, the time is uh, normally uh, high, it's a hard uh, switching. By using the soft switching, we can uh, uh, make this time a bit uh, less and uh, improve our uh, efficiency losses. We can limit it. Okay, uh, but about uh, many <coughs> structures that you can find in the internet and the literature, uh, for this DC bus converters, I uh, selected the qu quadratic bus converter because of uh, the sim simple uh, structure and only using one uh, power switch. As you know, when you are using uh, less number of uh, power switches, you uh, can uh, this chance to uh, have a simple and a cheap uh, controller structure. And also by this, uh, by only one uh, switch, it can uh, give you, for example, in a uh, duty cycle of 50%, uh, four times of input voltage as your output. For example, if you give uh, 100 DC voltage as input for this structure, you can get uh, 400 uh, DC voltage in your output. You, uh, so I decided to use uh, from this uh, structure. Uh, also, uh, when you are talking about uh, renewable energy, these DC boost converters uh, is strongly uh, employed 
as front end converters for res uh, for uh, recent renewable energies so, uh, such as uh, battery sources, photovoltaic structure, and fossils. Uh, uh, and uh, one of the most important parameters of boost converters uh, is the efficiency, especially when you are talking about renewable energy, energy sources when uh, they are uh, producing a limited amount of energy and efficiency here is a very very important thing uh, and uh, for this uh, purpose uh, we decide to use boost converter not boost, uh, back boost or back converter uh, transferring voltage uh, has this advantage that uh, give you this chance to have more uh, efficiency uh, rather than transferring a current. Uh, about this uh, structure, uh, I uh, talked in this table about switching losses. Uh, you can find in uh, the paper uh, very more detailed information about uh, only, uh, all types of uh, losses. I talked uh, here about switching losses because I'm uh, talking about switching losses and uh, efficiency improvement by limiting this uh, switching losses. You know, uh, the main uh, parameter here is MOSFET or our power uh, switch. As you know, in on <coughs> and off modes of this uh, structure, power switches, uh, power switch, we have two uh, kind of uh, losses. So if we can uh, uh, decrease uh, one or two uh, slides of this power we can improve the uh, efficiency okay uh, but uh, uh, what was the uh, thing that uh, I was uh, thinking about that uh, about for example please consider uh, the uh, condition uh, that uh, why the switch is off uh, and a sudden increment in a voltage in pin gate uh, in gate uh, of pin uh, gate of uh, power boost, uh, power uh, switch is uh, uh, suddenly uh, uh, implant. Uh, so by uh, a high dv on dt, uh, it will drive the gate pin of MOSFET by a uh, interesting and internal uh, capacitor of gate source. Uh, so it means uh, it can turn the switch on and uh, the switch will be on in an undesired time and uh, without applying any control signal. So, uh, therefore, uh, it can increase <coughs> the dynamic and switching uh, frequency losses uh, in a converter structure. The main idea uh, is to apply a parallel uh, a parallel uh, capacitor with, uh, with drain source and uh, by this way, by any sudden uh, increase in this in a gate source uh, voltage, uh, the voltage of the drain source will increase by uh, an exponential waveform. Uh, so uh, it can uh, decrease the possibility of uh, switch uh, activation. And uh, also about uh, current uh, with an undesired increase in uh, switch in or load current because of a uh, time, le time leakage it will pass uh, a, uh, from uh, a very narrow uh, band in a uh, place that is uh, for uh, drive circuit in gate pin of switch and uh, it can causing uh, local heating and gate uh, pin and harming the switch so uh, simply uh, for this purpose uh, we uh, applying we applied an inductor and uh, the current will increase by an exponential wave from the uh, with a small value of the i on the t for this structure so uh, it is our uh, proposed structure uh, several times ago i talked about cgs the internal uh, capacitor that is uh, uh, internally between gate source uh, pins of uh, power uh, switch and this is our uh, structure. I uh, used an LS, CS, and two diodes for this uh, structure. And uh, the way of uh, simulation will uh, show in this slide. Uh, for getting this slide, uh, I do a very 
uh, simulations and several days uh, we talked about uh, these uh, structures uh, and uh, because of the arrangement of these uh, uh, elements, components, for example, deals and uh, it's never uh, inductor is really uh, hard. Uh, you can find more than 25 uh, mathematical uh, uh, equations in the paper about this uh, slide. Uh, and uh, simply about, for example, uh, situation A or uh, first state. Uh, in this state, uh, switch M is turned on. Uh, diode DS1 is on and diode DS2 and D3 uh, are off. As a result, for example, here, uh, L2 uh, stores some energy by uh, through the switch of uh, M1. Or, uh, for example, in uh, state 2, the diode DS2 begins uh, to conduct and clamps the voltage uh, on the capacitor CS, as you can find in second state. Or any other states that uh, uh, expanded uh, in our uh, paper. And uh, about simulation, as you, sh uh, as you uh, can see about a figure, for example, in a figure uh, left, uh, you can find uh, three types of voltages, input voltage, output voltage, and a middle voltage. What is the middle <coughs> voltage? As I uh, said, uh, quadratic boost converter can increase two times uh, the, uh, the gain of a structure, rather to normal uh, boost converter. Uh, and for uh, 100 DC voltage as input, in first stage, we get a thing about uh, 190 uh, voltages. And finally, as we ex uh, expected, uh, we get 400 uh, DC voltages in output. Also, uh, about uh, the number component uh, currents, you can find uh, all uh, data, data in a uh, uh, right figure. Uh, in the final step, we have calculated the efficiency of the proposed structure in two different modes and uh, have done in comparison between a snubber, a snubber less cascaded power boost converter and uh, a structure with a snubber uh, sub uh, circuit and both conditions are given uh, in, ta in table as you see uh, in first step we fix the dc voltage at 100 dc voltage and uh, changing the uh, load at the uh, switching frequency of uh, 100 kilohertz and in the second step, uh, we, uh, we fix the DC uh, um, the load at the 100 ohm and change the DC voltage from uh, 50 volt DC to 150 uh, voltage. And uh, as a result, as you can see, in all uh, both methods and uh, simulations, we get a better result with our uh, SNOVER structure in a thing about uh, 33.5 kilowatts. But uh, also uh, we made uh, an implementation in a laboratory case, a thing about 100 watts. Uh, as you see uh, about uh, left A uh, figure, uh, you can see uh, it can show uh, our uh, switch turn on and turn off times and also when uh, it is uh, on and when is it, it is off. Uh, also, and the, the critical uh, figure, figure 9, with the S and IDS waveform, with its number sub circuit and video is number sub circuit. The most important subject is given in figure. Uh, right figure shows uh, switch turn off uh, time when drain source voltage goes from a high level to low level and uh, at the same time by current that passes from uh, the drain source increases from a low level to high level as you as you see in a and b uh, figures here and uh, as can be seen by applying the uh, snubber sub circuit to quadratic boost converter this time has been uh, very smaller regarding circuit without uh, this uh, sub circuit uh, as can be seen figure it uh, was 
19 nanoseconds, uh, that uh, decreases to 14 nanoseconds, and uh, it can uh, give us very good results. As uh, conclusion, uh, as I talked, uh, our study proposed a high frequency snubber uh, circuit applied to cascade boost converter uh, with a single power switch. It is very important for us and shows that uh, it can be effective in uh, decreasing switching losses when it is turn off mode is a uh, high voltage application. Simulation last rate a better efficiency, I think about 2% uh, percent and uh, 2 kilowatt output power with a desired output voltage. About the novelty of our study can be <coughs> summarizing in uh, several sections as uh, using only one power switch in a structure for high power transmission uh, transfer issue, a simple and cheap element and uh, application in circuits and uh, uh, ability to work in high frequency application and quick reaction of proposed uh, snubber sub-circuit. Simulation shows that the structure reaches to about uh, 390 volts as output voltage uh, when the uh, ideal uh, value is for 400 uh, dc volt uh, and uh, the time between high and low size of voltage signals on uh, power switch has decreased from 19 nanoseconds to uh, 14 nanoseconds in uh, 200 kilohertz. We uh, did this uh, our uh, implementation in two uh, different uh, frequencies, 100 and 200 uh, kilohertz, and uh, as you uh, saw, uh, the result <coughs> is uh, same approximately. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you, Thank you very much. Why not to switch to supercharging MOSFET? These uh, are free from the DVD problem and yes. the generation C6, C7 Yes, uh, no, uh, if I want to uh, talk about different types of converters and switches, uh, there are many types of switches and, uh, for example, MOSFETs. Uh, this work is uh, only uh, preparing, uh, comparing uh, two types of normal quadratic boost converters with uh, simple uh, MOSFET. Uh, I, uh, for example, <coughs> used uh, from IRF uh, 450 for this uh, structure in our uh, uh, implementation. So it's generation C1? Uh, so you are lagging five generations? Yes, uh, as I can, uh, as I saw, uh, we can uh, change the all uh, parts of our uh, structure, and uh, in that condition, we can get more uh, efficiency. Uh, as I said, uh, it is only down our implementation uh, implementation as down only in a laboratory scale. If uh, we consider a higher amount of uh, output powers, uh, you are right, and uh, we can change the elements. Okay, thank you very much. Um, just uh, since you uh, exactly want to switch on and off exactly in the time of zero, current and voltage, therefore you have to select properly parameters, electrical parameters. No, no thing is not uh, ideal. <coughs> uh, as I said, uh, we only uh, make a limitation okay. to this time from 90 to 40 Percent. nanoseconds. Okay. And it makes to uh, get uh, more efficiency, I think about two persons. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. More questions? Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, everybody, for the presentation. Okay, uh, thank you very much to all presenters for the part that we took uh, the presentation. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. Thank you all speakers from the audience. And I close the session and I invite you for the welcome party, which will be uh, organized uh, from uh, 6 to, to 22. Probably we have to gather here. Okay, therefore, thank you very much.